welcome back again to my youtube channel and today i'm so hot i i am i am so hot i'm sweating i don't know what's up yet the rains are already here which is a good thing but yeah so this is me today uh welcome to my youtube channel subscribe and uh, follow me on my authentic journey my stories and hopefully soon my fitness journey um i'm so glad to share i love sharing i love educating and uh, one thing i love is that through personal experience you get to pick one or two things that may help you in your own life and once you share you may get to know what other people go through and it makes it easier for all human beings to coexist so <laughs> wow i had decided to record all my delivery stories as if you have been watching i have three kids and they are all three under three so basically they are all three under two because my firstborn is two years and some months so i want to share my delivery story for my son he is called rome so the one that is two years old so for him it wasn't a good delivery story and being a first time mom it was we didn't know what you were doing anyway so it was a difficult delivery it was traumatizing but one thing i thank god because i uh, i came out of there with my baby we were both healthy but still if it, it affected a part of me yeah so if you saw my delivery story for my third born you may understand where i'm coming from for which my third delivery was the simplest okay let's not digress so my first delivery how was it uh number one it was an induction uh, and i can say the induction was not needed i think i was just i was just tired of which a lot of women get there i was uh, i was panicking and yeah so it started off on this was 20 2020 uh, at the height of covid okay in a way it had slowed down it wasn't so bad but it was 2020 october it's an october baby and uh i remember it so clearly and anyway it's good i document here so that when my son grows up he can be able to to see where he came from and yeah <laughs> good memories so it was October 2020 and uh, it was a uh, Friday morning. So that Friday morning, I, was it a Friday morning? Yeah, Friday. That Friday morning I woke up and I started feeling the, you know, small cramps here and there. And it was my first time. I was a first time mom, so I hadn't experienced uh I hadn't experienced anything like it so i think i got too excited i got too excited and um i i wanted to rush to hospital you know as a first time parent your mind goes i need to be in a hospital so what did i do the baby's bags were packed i think i was 38 weeks at this point the baby's bags were packed and i took them to the car i don't even think my husband saw, <laughs> saw me taking the bags to the car at the back of his head he just thinks that uh i wanted to go for a checkup he in his mind he didn't think that um i was going for maternity so at the back of his head he knew i'm just going for a checkup maybe i'm concerned he so i don't even think he knew i had taken the bags to the car i was so excited i was so tired and i wanted this baby out like immediately and uh, yeah so that was the beginning 
so that friday morning we went to hospital and uh i went to i went to the triage and uh i saw the doctor there and the doctor uh the doctor checked me and he was like okay you're you're like one and a half to two centimeters and i was like <laughs> yay the process has started and so the doctor was like but are you in any pain i was like okay no not really i'm not in pain but since we are two centimeters like i'm sure the baby will come soon i was so naive uh so what happened is that my husband came in and later joined joined me as we were processing the documents and he says allah the baby is coming today and i remember asking him when did you want the baby to come because this baby is coming <laughs> And I tell him, uh, you know what, uh, go to the car and take uh, take the bags. And he's shocked. He's like, what bags? I'm like, the baby's bag and my bag, bring them, bring them in. So he goes and uh, he goes and gets the bags. And then we go to the maternity ward. So this hospital was just... I think it was just a last minute hospital. I hadn't researched anything about hospitals. We didn't know anything. We just knew we were on a budget and we didn't want to exceed the budget or something. Now when I look back, I, I think I'd have done something different. I'd have researched more about the hospitals I wanted. So this was a last minute hospital. We had gone there a week previously and now the next week I, I went to deliver. I hadn't even done a maternity tour which is very important by the way for your own comfort and peace of mind you have to see their maternity wards uh their private uh their private rooms their delivery what is it called their labor room the labor room itself like you have to see so that your mind can start envisioning you there your mind can start um accepting the place and being comfortable with it so this hospital i didn't i just knew the maternity is in a certain floor and that was it so i was taken there and given a bed it was crowded at the height of covid that hospital took no measures the place was crowded and uh, i don't know why but they kept me kind of in a c-section recovery recovery suit or something i wasn't in like the labor ward itself because beside me was a chick who who had a who had just given birth to her baby c-section and basically everyone in that ward had their baby by c-section so i don't know why they didn't take me to the labor ward from my observation that was like a recovery ward after the babies were delivered maybe they didn't have space so i get there and uh this is friday I think I was admitted by 12 noon. Time goes on. No progress. We stay. No progress. So my doctor comes in and says, uh, you know what? You're not progressing at all. Why don't we do this? Why don't we give you the... Is it... Uh, I don't remember, but there's this tiny uh, pill to soften the cervix. And I think another one, they keep under your tongue i think also it's to work on induction so i wasn't induced by the, the the drip the iv i was induced by the pills so the pill was kept and one in the cervix and one under my tongue and i was crazy <laughs> my hormones went up the place oh my goodness i i remember the baby on the next bed crying and I feel as if my nipples were like aerials. They'd scream pain. And I'm like, what is happening? So that was not a good experience. And I will not advise anyone on induction. I was naive. I would have done things differently. <laughs> oh, I did things differently. But back then I was naive. I didn't know what it meant. So yeah, I had to undergo everything. And uh, so they keep the, the, the IV drip for hydration, I don't know. And uh, 
I don't know, they also had another IV for, I think, an antibiotic. And basically, I don't think I was progressing. Night came, uh, and they, they do these constant checks to see the baby's heartbeat and also to see my blood pressure. Yeah, uh, the food was bad, so I did not eat. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just allergic to bad food. I, I did not eat. I love you. You're going through so many things. Even if you're hungry, you're just not in the mood to eat. So I don't even think I ate. But I, I, maybe I tried. But at least they allowed food inside. So whatever my husband brought, I, I ate that. Like the Del Monte. <laughs> anyway. So what happened? It got to Friday night. Uh, no progress. I think I was maybe like three centimeters and now they from the induction the the pain was wearing out and I remember at night and the guy is like okay the pain is not progressing maybe it is wearing out but if it wears off let, let's see what we can do tomorrow and I was like okay fine and I was like <laughs> I remember there was at this point on Friday uh, the nurse came and I was in so much pain for the, from the induction. The contractions were just, you know, so strong. And uh, I was like, uh, I was disappointed that I was not progressing. And I was like, hey, I'm in so much pain. And the nurse told me, this is not, you haven't even begun feeling pain. Pain will come and you will know. So this is nothing. And I was like, okay, so this is nothing. So there's more pain coming. And yeah, I don't know. I think now I understand what he meant by that. So Friday night comes, no progress. And they kept on checking me after every four or five hours, which is another big no. I never knew. So that constant checking. Okay, far from it being uncomfortable, I, I think I also got an infection from the constant cervical checks. So that one is a big no. Uh, Friday night, the pain is just standard, standard. It gets to Saturday morning and uh, they check me and I'm like, at still three my body was not moving and they say okay you know what let's add another pill for the induction and i was like okay <laughs> i was i was so naive <laughs> i was like it's okay i don't mind they added another pill the contractions came and i think by by around maybe four not four uh, what time was it? By around um, 11 a.m. I think I think I was at four centimeters. By around so the and the the gyna kept coming and checking and she was like, okay, but can you feel the baby kick? I was like, yeah, I can feel the baby kick. Uh, what else? They'd check the heartbeat. The heartbeat was okay and uh so they were like okay let's wait and i'm like fine uh lunch came my husband came to visit and uh yeah it was my husband and my mom oh my mom came later so it was ah my husband didn't come i realized he came in the evening <laughs> so at about i think uh i think 2 2 p.m I was checked again and I was at six centimeters and uh, they took me to the my waters were not broken so they took me to the delivery room man that place was cold that I I wish I had a tour of that facility because the delivery room was like a factory floor it, it was so spacious it was so cold the bed was just off Yani. I wish, like, I wish I had a view of how it looked. So they said, because you're six centimeters, what we'll do, we will rupture the membranes so that labor progresses faster. Oh, I'm so naive. I agree. <laughs> uh, 
like i did things differently the second and the third time my first time was a learning curve and it was so traumatizing because i knew nothing so uh they break the waters i'm six centimeters at 2 p.m and once they break the waters now there's no caution for your baby the contractions are full on they are so strong and you feel like dying if a contractions come if a contraction come you're like take me jesus <laughs> like, it is it is so bad so what happened is that uh yeah i was just dying by myself <laughs> through this contraction <laughs> i now understood what the nurse said that the, the pain was bound to increase so uh this is 2 p.m uh, 3 p.m 4 p.m or about 3 30 to 4 my mom came and yeah she found me dying from the contractions and she started rubbing my back it was just so bad and uh, uh that's when the nurse was like if you feel the pooping sensation let us know because basically the baby will be coming don't go to the toilet i'm like okay fine uh my mom came at about so we spent like an hour and a half with my mom going crazy and my mom telling me yeah this is what you chose and i'm like yeah i'll never have more kids again <laughs> Yeah, so my mom massaged my back and everything. And uh, my husband came at about almost 5, 5 p.m. And I think I think uh, 10 minutes later or 20 minutes later, I called the nurse. I'm like, I feel like pooping. I feel like pooping. So <laughs> the nurse took me to the delivery room. The labor delivery labor room all of them so the nurse took me to the delivery room now the funny thing is that once we talked with my husband he said he thought the nurse took me to the toilet to poop <laughs> okay now he knows better but he was also a first time parent and he he genuinely thought by me saying i feel like pooping meant the nurse took me to the toilet yeah we, we were so naive both of us so i went to the delivery room this time my husband was not with me uh, my husband was with me during the next two deliveries but this one he didn't even have a clue what was happening so i went to the delivery room and i think here's where my trauma starts okay the induction was trauma part one not the trauma part two starts while I was giving birth on the uh, the bed, the what? The nurses were like taking me through a marathon. The pushing was like a sport. They did not take into consideration about the contractions, how to push, breathe through your contractions they forced the baby out i don't even think i was really 10 centimeters because uh it was it was such it was so bad i remember pushing and thinking this nurse does not want me to breathe she just wants me to push continuously if i take a pause to breathe it's like i'm offending her and i was like how do you want me to push and i'm not breathing so it was so bad because they rushed my body and uh, finally the baby came and it was a relief all the pain all <laughs> all the suffering ended and uh, I, I was so happy to see my son and he was so tiny i never knew babies looked so gross when they were born yeah they looked like an alien and yeah so i was happy the baby was here but wait the trauma continues so after delivery the nurse noted wow you're bleeding a lot uh let me call the gyna to come and have a look at you so 
we get out of the delivery room and uh, the guy comes and uh, she's like okay this bleeding let's just go to theater trauma part three so we get out of the delivery room my mom and my husband are handed our baby and we go to theater for heaven's sake i just had a baby i am walking to theater these guys i would never go back to that hospital <laughs> for, okay <laughs> I'd go for an outpatient, but not the word. You're just from giving birth. You're bleeding, and you're told, walk to theater. Not even a wheelchair. A wheelchair would have helped, maybe. But yeah, so I walk to theater. I sit on the bed, and um, they, they inject me the numbing. I think it was the epidural, the local, where it numbs you half of your body because the, the, the doctor was to check why I'm bleeding so much. And it so happens that my cervix was torn. Trauma part three. Oh my goodness. So the diagnosis was they had to stitch up my cervix and what else? Yeah, I was wrecked. Yeah, <laughs> I, I had a severe tear because the nurses were pushing. They were pushing me to push this baby out in the shortest time possible. I don't know where they were rushing to. And... Uh, that severely tore me. So I had torn my cervix and also my external features were torn. So I didn't get an episiotomy. It was all tearing the natural tear from the, the baby coming out. And it was so bad. So they stitched me up in the theater and uh, brought me back to the ward. And... Uh, yeah we didn't have milk <laughs> but now at least that was done i'm just i think I'm, I'm a little bit grateful because they stitched me up in theater maybe it's, it was because of the severity but i didn't feel anything so that was good because they they did a neat job i guess because i couldn't feel a thing so i guess they did a neat job and uh yeah that was that was my delivery experience i went back to the ward Found my husband and my mom with the baby, and yeah, we were so happy. Rome was so tiny; <laughs> he was so cute. I'll, I'll insert his pictures. He was such a, I don't know, such a fussy baby. He's still a fussy toddler now. I, I guess it's his personality. But yeah, that was his delivery story, and. <laughs> I learned a few things or a lot of things. Uh, tip number one, I really hope you have a notebook and a pen and you are, you are ready to learn. And not just from me, you are ready to research and have a better and positive birth experience because your birth experience is what you choose other than the exceptional emergencies that may occur that may lead to a c-section you also have to be fully aware of why it is an emergency and feel in control that yes i had an emergency c-section because of this so it applies on both ends if you're going for a c-section or if you're going for a vaginal birth of which i think most of my tips are for a vaginal birth tip number one uh don't accept an induction there are several cases where you might need an induction of which are also emergency situations don't be like me don't walk to the hospital and just be given induction and just accept can you find out the reason why can you find out if it is a necessity if it is an emergency or they're just giving it to you because one thing for sure is that a medical induction is rough on your body. And I think for me, it's just by the grace of God. It is so rough on your body that the contractions are so strong and your baby might not be able to withstand the strength of the contractions. 
and their heart rate may start dropping or elevating because of the stress. And uh, that is a very good reason to avoid an induction. You better let your body progress naturally or uh, what worked for me and what I've seen work for other people is the midwife's brew or self-induction by castor oil. Please research about it yourself and it, that, that triggers your body to naturally start labor. So your body is able to cope. It is not so strong on you like you're, you're taken all of a sudden. So what helps is your body, the best way is for your body to go into labor on its own. Induction, please understand why your medical team wants to give you an induction because you might be getting yourself into some messy situation that you had not planned. Tip number two, the cervical checks. Uh, just know that you have authority to, to declare <laughs> or to say that I only want to be checked once or twice because the more they check your cervix dilation, the more they are introducing foreign, you know. So at the end of um, the delivery, I had an infection of which it was, I think I was checked a lot of times. I can't even recall how many times because it was a lot. And um, I think from then I decided, and with some more information, I decided, uh, I think the only time I'll be checked is maybe twice or once. The second time I was checked twice and the third time I was checked once. So, and I was telling my husband that if we go to hospital and they, they should allow us to settle down so that they can check me. I don't want to just rush and you are checked. The nurse checks you, then the doctor comes, the gyna checks you, then he goes, then they change the shift, the other gyna comes, he checks you. It is too much checking. It is unnecessary. Your body will progress and with the contractions coming together and everything, you will also be able to know that you are going further and further along. So tip number three, don't go to hospital early. Oh my goodness, that was me the first time. Don't don't go to hospital early. Uh, I stayed in hospital for, I think, four days. Normal delivery, four days. I was uncomfortable. I didn't like the food. I was hungry. There was no TV. There was no internet. I was just, I was just depressed for the most part. So take your time at home. Uh, eat good food and wait for your labor to progress. So relax, bounce on your ball, talk to your people. That will help a lot with also you relaxing. And once you relax, also the baby is at peace and doing doing their own thing to come to the world. Yeah, tip number four is that uh, go do a hospital tour where you want to go. Be specific, ask all the questions, ask about the, the food menu, how it is, ask about the delivery rooms, go see for yourself, uh, see the words, will you be comfortable, ask what they permit and what they don't permit, and see if it checks with you. Also, in case of an emergency, how are they charging? That should be, that should be part of your agenda. So, yeah, and uh, I think those are all my tips because sometimes you just have to be vigilant. We went there expecting to pay 15000 because it was a normal delivery and we got out of there with a bill of almost 80000 of which they had waived some fees. They had, we were just taken by taken by shock like it's it's not something we were expecting so 
you just have to be meticulous with what you're planning so that things may not go the way you want but at least you should have a say in the direction of things uh that was my delivery experience it was traumatic but we made it through <laughs> we made it through my next two deliveries wow were a beautiful experience i can say beautiful because i was better educated i didn't want a traumatizing birth again and i just i just wanted to feel in control so you can find both delivery stories uh i had started the delivery story of my third born then this of my first born then the last one will be of my second born they are all very different and very educational if you have any questions please ask me any question i'd love to share i'd love to hear your experiences and most of all thank you for your audience thank you for listening thank you for your love and don't forget to subscribe and follow and like and as we continue on this journey of motherhood and postpartum thank you